Hey guys, Death Knight of Anime here, bringing you my review for One Piece episode 860. And so, to, okay, to start off, okay, to start off, I don't know about the rest of you, but I laughed out loud when Luffy made it to the, ended up, was, was making it back to the Mirror World, and Brule didn't even waste a second in shouting for Katakuri to rescue her. Just the timing of between between Luffy, but just the timing between Luffy making it back to this back to the Mirror World. And Brule shouting out Katakuri's name and just and and Luffy Luffy ducking out after Katakuri attempted to attempted to rescue her. It was like the timing on that was perfect and just the timing on that scene was hilarious. And something equally as hilarious, if not more so for me, than the scene of Beige trying to clear up was was the scene of Beige trying to cheer up his wits. Only got funnier by Beige saying 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 kawaii kawaii and the delivery of that was just beautifully hilarious like it's it it was just it's one of those things where as where of course it's it's natural as a japanese voice actor but just hearing that uh, hearing that that particular word come out of basically come out of a basically come out of beige of all people like it was just the delivery of that was just hilariously amazing to watch and as weird as it sounds something like that actually kind of has me a little curious as to what Kalhi Bear's take on that scene is like like I don't normally talk about the English dub in in a One Piece episode review but yeah if if and when Funimation gets to that point it makes me wonder how is Kalhi Bear going to handle this scene like it's <laughs> like for those who don't Kyle Hebert is the one vo who's voicing be Beige in the dub, and yeah, he's got bit Kyle Hebert has this whole like typical gangster thing going on with it, and just <laughs> I think I don't know if it's gonna be as good as what we saw here in this episode with the Japanese, but it's with the Japanese seiyu, but yeah, I got I'm I'm all for Kyle Hebert's for Kyle for seeing Kyle Hebert's take on this scene. It's, it's it should be amazing. Um... Of course, the episode quickly shifted gears to the whole hostage situation with Chiffon and Oven demanding Beige's surrender, which I'm not even going to play it up. That was really quite an emotional scene because I actually got choked up a bit. And I think what really made that scene so powerful is that it is that that scene, along with that little montage of Chiffon with the fire tank pirates, reinforced One Piece's biggest themes of like people don't have to be blood related in order to be family i mean i know beige is chiffon chiffon's husband but it's really telling when the people that chiffon is actually related to treat her more like a mistake an embarrassment and just straight up garbage than beige's than beige's and his his crew like they're, they're really the only ones who actually gave a sh gave a shit about about chiffon and she never gave we actually was shit about Chiffon and gave and gave her what what she never had and what she wanted and in which is a family and in Oven's case he's even like I'm about to say something that's probably like in Oven's case like he's equally as bad as Big Mom because he he doesn't even like the thing about Oven in this in this episode and even episodes before is that. He doesn't even try and understand. Uh, he doesn't even under, try and understand pretty much Chiffon and, and what she's going through and, and why she even betrayed Big Mom to begin with. It's like, in 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 that respect too. I guess it's a tragedy in and of itself because Big Mom has doctrinated her children with a mentality of her rule is law. Of her rules law, so in that sense, I get. I guess Oven is just like doing what what he's taught, which, again, just goes to prove you, you need to be careful when raising your kids. Um, although, e even if even if I do feel sorry for Oven in that sense, it still doesn't prevent me from thinking uh, he's a total asshat. And when Beige constantly kept turning the tables on Oven in this episode, I couldn't help but. I really couldn't hold back a smile of pure satisfaction at seeing Oven's whole plan crumble around him. Like just seeing Oven just constantly get frustrated at the fact that his his plan wasn't his plan just fell apart in an instant. It was it was amazing to watch. Um, 
Now, there's a very brief scene in the episode that I feel is worth mentioning. Is worth, like, special mention, actually, which is when the episode switches over to the Straw Hats preparing to fight the big mom pirates again, and, and, we, and we see, basically, and we see pretty much Chopper pretty much going up on the crow's nest in order to, t- in order to, in order to tell, in order to tell Carrot of what's going on. And then Carrot simply like looks up at the sky and asks if it's going to be a full moon tonight. And it's one of those scenes where as a manga reader, I was absolutely hyped because fellow manga readers, we know what's coming. And like, it's one of those scenes where as a, for manga readers, we all know what's coming. We all know the epicness that's about to happen. For anime only, it's a little bit of a weird situation with with you with you guys. Because let's just say the reason as to why as to why Carrot asked that the, the end result of what you're going to get out of it has already been spoiled for you. Which is which is the one which is the one flaw I still have with the superpowers opening is that it did it did give the surprise away of those it did give give the surprise away to those who few who only watch the anime. Although I will say, even if you do know even if you do know what's coming, anime only or manga reader, it's still gonna be an epic as hell spectacle to see. I know that I know that much. Cause like with with Toei, they are back and forth for sure, but they, they, they definitely they definitely they definitely make it count. So they definitely they definitely make it good when it counts, and I can see can see the reveal of that being one of those times. Um, and also, funny thing about this episode is that the funny thing about the episode is the title, because the title of the episode says "Beige and Luffy's Determination," but if you really look at the episode as a whole, Luffy's barely in the episode, and when he did, he was practically overshadowed by Beige at at that point but either way you're like it's one of the things where you're not going to hear me complain all that much it's it was just a funny little thing to take note about take note about with the episode and the title because if it's one of those things where if you are going to extend an episode i'd rather you focus on other characters outside of the straw hats and luffy because that that seemed to be the biggest flaw with the previous episodes that needed to add things to widen the gap so to speak between the anime and the manga is that Th- those pre- all those previous episodes weren't really focusing on stuff that was interesting, although I all in, in and for the most part in this case even when the episode is for in later ep- in late the episodes lately even if they're slow paced they're still focusing on something interesting I guess you could say, um, although I will say the stuff with Luffy for what little we did get was pretty interesting because now he's made a declaration to achieve the same power as Katakuri and. Yeah, if you thought the beating Luffy got before was brutal, it's about to get even more intense. Like, he is going to get, like, okay, it's one of those things where he, he is going to be putting up a fight, but when it gets to the points where, where Luffy basically is going to try and, uh, is going to try and achieve the same power as Katakuri, let's just say, uh, yeah, it's it's going to get even more brutal than, than what we've seen thus far. That's, that's all I'm going to say to you. <laughs> um... And I guess since I'm on topic of the pacing, I guess, if you couldn't tell just from how much I've talked already, this is really another episode where even if the pacing isn't the greatest, it still ha- it's it still was it still has an entertainment factor factor that it still has an entertaining factor that makes it enjoyable to watch. So if nothing else, if the episodes do slow down in pacing, as long as this director ke- keeps up what he's doing, I think that I think we we will kind of have a maintained level of entertainment, so to speak, even in the slower parts, because because it, because it, it's focusing on some because in this this episode is actually a prime example of something I think that I think should be focused on a lot, if if you're going to slow the pacing down, which is the which is the relationship of the characters, and which is the relationship of the characters. Although in this, although. I am. St- I'm not gonna lie. I'm still a little, a little cautious because because be, be, because now they've gotten to the point where the cake is now on Beige's ship. Th- this is definitely around the point where, where the pacing did kind of get a little wonky, even in the manga. That's 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 to, that's for sure. Um, but um, yeah, guys, that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Crunch Crunchyroll. 
Death Night of Enemy, signing off. Later, guys.